Welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I want to teach you guys a few simple tricks on how to use the claw of your hammer for pulling nails. On my first day working as a carpenter for a crusty old framer, one of the first things he asked me is, Ben, do you know how to pull a nail? And I go, of course I do, it's easy. And I wanted to impress him. And so I was going to show him this fancy trick that my dad showed me when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid without a lot of strength, I'd be trying to pull nails and it can be pretty hard. You really don't have a good angle or good leverage. So my dad showed me this little trick to put a two by or a one by under and then that helps you get way better leverage to pull the nail really easily. So while that was a very useful trick, it doesn't work in all situations. And the first thing this crusty old carpenter said was, no dummy. You can't do that when you're standing on a bunch of trusses or on a roof or on some rafters. You got to be able to find a better way to do it. So he showed me how just holding the 2x4 up, you got a stubborn nail that you can't just yoink out. What you do is you get the claw of your hammer in like this and then you twist it like that. And so you can quite easily pull a nail out that way when you're in awkward positions and don't have a block to help you get leverage. So it's still a great tip. But I sure got embarrassed that day. Thanks, Dad. No, seriously, thanks, Dad, for everything. Okay, next, if you're pulling out a lot of nails, well, get yourself set up with a couple of sawhorses. Go to town on it. I actually find this to be a really enjoyable job. Call me crazy, but I love pulling nails. Hashtag strangely satisfying. Now I know not everyone is going to enjoy pounding and pulling nails, but the good news is if you do need to vent, you can passive aggressively fling nails at your coworkers or employees. It works really well. One should never miss an opportunity to get out some of that frustration. Okay, so next, the last trick is for stubborn bent nails. So here's another way you can use the claw of your hammer to manipulate those nails to easily get them out. Sometimes you get these ones on the end that are super annoying. Here, make sure they're supported really close to the end here so it's not bouncing around. But yeah, obviously if you try hitting those, it's gonna be a struggle. What you do is you can kind of straighten the nail out by using the claw that way. So I've now made the nail straighter and I'm now gonna line it up towards the hole, like that. So now the force is all going back directly down through the original hole. Usually when I'm pulling lots of nails like that, I actually cut the ends of the two by fours off and then just focus on the middle ones. All right, here's one last example. Bend the nail back with your claw and then that way it's straight. Well, you can do this one too for fun. Why not? Who doesn't love straightening out nails? All right, next let's get into the hammer a little bit. I wanna show you guys one of the best hammers that I've ever come across. And this is just the Vaughn California Framer. Why do I like this hammer so much? It's the shape of the claw. It has one of the best claws for pulling nails that I've ever found. It's long and so the nails get wedged right in there. It's sharp, so it works even when pulling nails out of knots and things sometimes. If you can just get the right angle, you can manage to pull them out. I'm gonna link this hammer in the description below. Now this is the 23 ounce California Framer and it's a bit of a bear of a hammer. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one unless you're super butch. I actually think the best one is the 19 ounce California Framer and I'm gonna look for the one that's got the handy dandy magnetic nail setter because those are super handy. Anyways, I love the Vaughn hammers. I've been using them for a long time. They have a great design, really nice and ergonomic, a great hit and they're pretty cost effective. So I've been running them for a long time and I've tried all kinds of things. I've tried all the stilettos, titanium hammers, and I always come back to a good steel hammer with a wood handle. Okay, so I know I haven't been posting a lot lately, you guys. So right here, I'm gonna link an old video that I pulled off my channel because I was all embarrassed and self-conscious about it. But I know you guys actually like the videos where I struggle. Now keep in mind, this video is almost three years old. So I filmed it a long time ago. And I'll probably link another video at the end of that one if you're interested on what happened after that job. 
So those are two of my oldest videos before I even started on the drywall videos. On to another topic, the Ask Vancouver Carpenter series. You guys, Ask Vancouver Carpenter is dead. So it flopped pretty hard. It's actually my worst performing video I've ever done and it took the most to put out. So let me give you an example. Basically, it took me almost four hours to make that video. It got 7,000 views. I made 30 whole dollars from it. So divide that by four, I think we're looking at what? 750 per hour? And to top it all off, the real insult to injury was that 11 people unsubscribed because of that video. So I actually wound up negative subscribers from that. I could honestly do better on YouTube if I just made videos like this. Welcome back. So it's on the top floor. That's a really common place. But anyways, yes, follow the linked video and you won't really have... But anyways, yeah, follow the linked video here and you're not gonna have any problems with that repair. It's actually a pretty simple one. <laughs> that is so stupid. I can't believe you're laughing. Anyways, you guys, the point is, the input was not worth the output. And in order to keep this channel viable, I really have to make sure that I put my energy where it counts. So I am going to respond to the emails that I've gotten from you guys. I'm really sorry that I can't continue making those videos. I did actually get a lot out of the personal interaction from you guys. But again, it's just not viable. So actually what I'm going to be doing, I have a lot of plans for this year. I'm actually going to be putting the tool belt back on and start going on to job sites again. And just sometimes filming vlogs and also filming whatever spontaneous ideas come to me. So I've found it's not actually been super good for me just sitting at home trying to fix stuff on my house and thinking of ideas of how to make my house look less mushroom colored. I need to be back out there getting inspired and getting back on the tools. Anyways, big plans for 2020 guys. There's lots more than that, but I can't let you in on everything. I just wanna say thanks for watching. Thank you for your support. Lots more to come. I wanna thank anyone who's been subscribing and who's been watching the videos. It's been appreciated. Okay, you guys, till the next video.